Hello everyone, welcome back to Getting to Know Edith Finch. Uh, it's a game about family, it's about growing up, it's about death, it's about existentialism, it's about the human condition, it's about video games, it's about art, about memory, it's about a lot of stuff. Um, and it's got a lot of stuff in it, and we are going to be doing Barber's Room today, so enjoy. You like Barber's Room. I do. I mean, it's not the most fun to play, but it's cool. Growing up, I always thought of Barbara as a child star. Swan Lake. Nice. Mm, that's something that's always bothered me. Is that there's some professions that are about children, and that always seems kind of unfair to me. It's like you haven't even yeah, experienced yeah, 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 yeah. life and yeah. you're like forced yeah. into being this thing. Oh, the Hollywood. Yeah. Kind of, <laughs> again, like VR effect wallpaper. I never thought about how hard it must have been for her afterwards. I feel like there's probably references in here that I'm not getting. I mean, it's like teenage, right? This is like, I don't know, 60s, like diner wear or something. I don't know, just kind of like classic, like Back to the Future or something. Like, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm an introverted person. I spent my childhood or teenagerhood just playing video games and stuff and not like going to roller derbies and having pizzas and things like that. But, um, but I don't know, it's kind of. Kind of an interesting like this is like the shrine to her like it is child to her career but then her real life is in here right this is like this the stuff she was doing yeah, yeah so it's like she wasn't an international or national yeah. but she was seattle it's like isn't that an interesting cookie cake thing that's going on there? Yeah, i don't know what like, this is uh, how many dots are on this i'm Three, guessing like 30 six, seven, 16, alright, so she's 16 years old. Okay. At the time of the story. The little VR goggles. 3D Again, goggles. bringing out the 3D, oh, the immersive on. tech, but also it's like a retro movie thing. Yeah. Right? Especially yeah. like horror movies and stuff. Probably were big on 3D back in the day. Alright. Of all the stories people wrote about Barbara's death, I'm surprised Edie saved this one. So it's a comic book, right? Another relative of the video game, insofar as they're both, you know, beloved of young boys. They're pulpy. They're low. What do they call it? Lowbrow well, culture. They were like how people would do like escapism. Yes, but they're all fantastical. They're about like mega violence and superpowers and fantasy and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're like surreal. It's pop culture. Um, so, I, I don't know, I mean, uh, nowadays we're getting, we, we got comic book movies for like two decades and now we're starting to get video game movies, they're just, they're, they're akin to each other, you know, so this is kind of another, it's like, kind of reflecting on, like, what is this medium of video games, why is it so Entertaining. YA style, right? Like the whole, the whole, this game itself, Edith Finch has this kind of young adult mm -hmm. novel style and it's like, I don't know, like, why do we do this kind of things? It's another way of telling stories, right? Yeah. Old Jack here with another ghastly tale inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it The Surprise Ending of Barbara Finch. Hey, it's that same stained glass of the Finch you As a child the front door. star, Barbara I think sort was of famous like lost in the generation here. Um, <laughs> Now it's but this is another meta story. Just it's like we're getting a different kind of narration. But in a lucky break, she'd been right. asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. It was just a oh, look, boost there's a of space space music. Music. Yeah. Unfortunately, her scream hadn't aged well. <laughs> mm, getting better. I think you just need the right motivation. 
Her biggest fan and current boyfriend, Rick, was about to demonstrate when... <laughs> now that was a great scream. It was Barbara's father, Sven. He'd slipped into a table saw and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So Barbara got stuck babysitting her youngest brother, Walter. Her convention comeback was canceled. Foreshadowing, of course, that the great screen comes from actual Okay, I'm hearing frustrations, violence. but I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried... A gang of hoodlums in Halloween masks have been terrorizing Orca's Island tonight. Police are urging residents to... So these are all, like, surprisingly rude. That like, Orca's the Island is where they are. You're those right. Are brothers and stuff. Also, I loved your delivery on that. Why well, is your basement door locked? Exaggerated ED story, because my right? dad likes yeah. making puzzles and secrets. Edie was probably packages. freaking advising the cops. There's a person. <laughs> the secret is to keep winding and winding until finally the key pops out. Thanks, babe. I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> it's like the player character being like, okay, let me just go do that. <laughs> Thanks, Gordon. <laughs> so Barbara went to look for him right on cue. And now we're in the comic panel. Oh no! We're in the comic panel, which I so like, and we have this wacky shell shade shading that's yeah. attempting to look like a thing. House was silent. It's just so fun. It is very. Cute. Um, look, it's moving. Yeah, I mean the art style is just kind of wacky. I kind of hate when games try and look like comics. In my view, it just doesn't really work. Like the freaking Walking Dead comics. Um, but what I love in game, first of all, look, it's just like rendering multiple 3D views like at the same time, you know? Or like, I'm sure it's like a static image and then it transitions to be, but it just looks right. sweet. Like yeah. I would just yeah. imagine, literally imagine playing a game where this was just the format for the whole game. Right. Yeah. And you'd just be playing like Wolfenstein and it's BJ Blasco is trying and to you track can see down the next level. Yeah, yeah, and you'd just be like <laughs> blasting through and then the door would bust open and it would cut to a different, like movies have cuts, comics are all about cuts, Video games almost never have cuts, and in fact, I'm sorry to say, it's getting worse. Video games like uh, God of War are getting really obsessed with like being super smooth, and they're like, oh, it's all one take. Like, there's no cutscene. Like, it's just, or the, I mean, there are cutscenes, but they don't cut. They're just scenes. <laughs> but yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. the camera just kind of zooms around and stuff, and it's like that's cool. That's a fun virtuosic yeah. thing. There's no, movies like that games, did that. Some games should be like that. Yeah, not all games. I mean, I yeah. love the movie. Gravity, which is, has, makes a big deal out of having like an unbroken cut for the first part, um, and like Children of Men or 1917 or whatever. But games should have more cuts. They have been hamstrung in this by the fact that uh, you know there's loading screens whenever you change from one place to another, and it's hard to you, you know games usually try to hide that with some kind of BS like you're traveling through hyperspace <laughs> animation or like you're crawling through a narrow passageway. Um, but yeah. but that doesn't have to be the case. First of all, you can make games today that are like just indie games, you know, with low texture resolution or whatever that load really quickly. Second, in the future, you know, maybe there'll be faster hard drives and then we won't have to have load screens as much. If you want to play a game that makes cuts all the time, 30 Flights of Loving <laughs> is one of my all-time favorites. It's literally I'm glad only, you worked that in. It's only like 20 minutes long. It's a great If game. you experience the joy of exploration and just like surprise and novelty and just like I don't know, just a cohesive but totally unfamiliar aesthetic uh, that you get from Edith Finch. You are gonna love Thirty Flights of Loving. So, uh, so play the game. I don't know, just like the game should have cuts in it. That, that's not the only thing that this section is about. But honestly, I just am so in support of that she message. Found Rick's crutch and imagine the worst. All right, now look what happened, okay? You became a video game player. You have, now it's like full first person, kind of. Um, so that's kind of nice. But also I can press the attack button and I swing the crutch. It's a weapon. Look, I can freaking, I can physics. Holy. I can, it, it's funny that it doesn't, not, you can't play pool at all. You just whap them. Um, but what's funny about this, okay. Like, this is the only part of the- I mean, except for the freaking owl eating- whatever. There's probably other parts that, like, quote-unquote, have combat, like when you saw off the head of a fish, it's Lewis. 
but this is the part that is the most similar to an actual first-person video yeah. game. There this are, feels like a video There game. are gonna be literal enemies of, like, monsters, like Halloween monsters, like tacky monsters that don't exist in real life, <laughs> are gonna invade your house, and you have to fight off the zombies by attacking them, just like in a video game. And what are you using? What is this game mechanic? It's a literal crutch. You just think just, like, <laughs> stop making boring ass games where you melee zombies because that is a crutch like for telling you that yeah for telling a real story like you could just do real game design you can make a game about being a shark flopping around <laughs> in the pacific northwest you know but instead you just made the same shit that came in the default unity package or whatnot um, look at how many objects they have, they, these aren't elsewhere in the house um, this yeah. is like gone home all over again um but uh Anyways, it's just, you gotta admire the personality of this game. And the message is just like, come on. Like, you know, there video, other there's so much possibility, right? It, it, Edith Finch, it's, it's about, like, there's all this kind of family and existential themes, but it is, like, really about game design versus, like, The Witness kind of feels like it's, I don't know, it's, like, huge into game design, but personally, I'm, like, primarily into the philosophical themes of The Witness, and then secondarily, I'm like, wow, it has all these messages about the potential of games, and like, why aren't we doing so much more? Why aren't we using games as, like, education to, like, tell people in the world, to help them understand the situation, and, like, stuff like that. Um, and, I don't know, with the Edith Finch, I, I'm more into the game design side, um, and, it more yeah, it just kind of like a... Because each level is, like, a different type of game design. Yeah, yeah, or, or its ideas feel more, you know, it's more like a collection of experiments rather than kind of an overall statement or something. Um, but I don't know, just the level of creativity and kind of like, just like the witness encourages you to like, just think more like about life and like just yeah. like have higher standards for like what games could be and like think more about how they could be used. The same, this game is like, man, like there's just so much creativity that's possible. You know, like, you people think that, like, the Blink and Dishonored is good, you know? <laughs> but, like, we could just do could so just do much. So, anyway, The gang's leader is the infamous Hookman killer, Dr. Carl Hamill, who impaled and then ate his family ten years ago tonight. Here's a punching bag. Punch it. Wow, wow. <laughs> this is, like, amnesia. There's the saw blade, right? Oh. The blood is there from Sven. It's, it's from... It's when Sven cut his hand. I move the boxes around to go through like day sex or something. just trying to scare you to help you find your scream. Well, I'm not scared, Rick. I'm furious. Then act furious. All I'm getting from you now yeah, is that like you're a hurt, he's like yeah. to act. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. She threw him out, but she kept a little something to remember him by. Barb, have you seen my other crutch? And she was still holding it when she fell asleep watching the late, late picture show. Hours later... Barbara! Walter, what's going on up there? Ah! Okay, I'm coming up, but if this is a trick, you're dead, Walter. So this is like an older version of the house, with the, still the brick fireplace. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. Yeah, just, probably, uh, probably... Oh. This doesn't make sense. Oh, oh my god, chair. it's an egg chair. Yeah, it is an older version of the house. Hilarious. Egg chair <laughs> physics. Oh my god. Wild, dude. Um, yeah, I mean, like, the cliché-ness of the story, of course, is kind of like a, a joke fun at on, books. like, the, yeah, like, the pulpy Wait, nature of comic books and stuff. Books. Oh my god, and then, and then they're actually knocked over in real life because uh, it's 30 years later. Yeah. Except not because Edie just made up this whole story. Oh my god, apples. All right. It's Halloween. Sorry. <laughs> I'm getting too excited about this game. Oh, that's why there's a monster in this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The little cat eyes. Cat about to eat you later. 
like a Molly story. Yeah, but I can take this ladder right now. Unless I can't climb up to <laughs> You don't have the grudge. Rick has the grudge. That's also like a poke at scary video. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. All these are, you know, they're just, just four movie stuff. Island police describe the man as six feet tall with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. I returned, saw the hook man, and was speechless. <laughs> he was quite smashing. <laughs> and he was. He couldn't get enough. There's gotta be another way out of here. Yeah, so you're now, in the game. We're reeking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She played her part beautifully. I'm gonna try and go out the window just like. She thought about it being a new altar, but uh, just no. couldn't do it. I was gonna sneak around. Take him out. Monsters they were, and she realized what was about to happen. She was going to be famous. And with her final breath, Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. I wasn't there myself, but <laughs> I hear Barbara was magnificent. Poor girl. She had a taste for stardom. But unfortunately, so did her fans. Of course, the police blamed it all on poor Rick, who disappeared the same night. And little Walter? Hiding under his bed the whole time. He took it all pretty hard. But that's another story. As for Barbara, tucked <laughs> inside the music box is all they ever found of her. Her ear. Now that's what I call a real eerie tale. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> 
Edie told me all Barbara wanted was to be remembered, as absurd as that comic was. Maybe what Edie saw was a happy ending. So, I mean, to me, this story kind of speaks of, uh, like, the whole, the, as we were talking about the whole child star thing, right? Like, she's just famous for, like, being in some, like, weird Beauty and the Beast Bigfoot movie, um, and, uh, like, that's such a... Two it, seconds of fame, Yeah, right? it's, like, all she wanted just to be remembered, right? But, like, but you're known only for this tiny thing, you know, not for who you really are or something, um... But then, like, who is ever known for who they really are, right? Like, uh, like we were discussing in the previous episode about trying to pass on these memories and stuff, right? Like, this is, like, a tiny, tiny... You know, it's just it's just the image of yourself. It's like this little doll is everywhere, right, yeah. you know? But, like, what's the meaning of that? It's just, like, becoming some pure replicator and sending some weird little, you know, like <laughs> meme image now, out yeah. into the universe, like, you know, broadcast it to Alpha Centauri or something. Mm -hmm. Um, like there's no, there's no reason to do that because it's such a low fidelity impression of it. So you know it doesn't really mean anything. Um, and then the, um, I don't know, this, the story of the, uh, of of the fans is kind of, I don't know, just a, a commentary, as they'll say. I, I don't really know what it means, but of course it's, it's ironic that it's, it's the it's the fans who like her who are dressed up as the evil monsters. But then the fans are evil that, you know, she gets, yeah. like, assaulted She's in this house her, yeah. and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, that, uh, uh, you know, I mean, that's that's a common, like, thing that shows up in media and stuff about being famous. It's like you, you make a piece of the relationship between artists and Fair. fans and stuff like that. Like I don't know. An like, it's, enemy, yeah. it's fraught and whatnot. I, I'm usually not too into, like musicals that are all talking about everything about how it's like to be a musical or something like that um, but um, uh, but anyways that kind of uh, element of things going on here yeah. I guess it's another like perception of people versus what you actually are kind of conflict yeah yeah I don't know just about society about uh <laughs> this feels significant that you're like crawling into this weird box. Uh, I guess now I know why mom doesn't like me playing with the music box. Um. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. It's funny. All those times I played with the music box and never found the basement key. I think that's kind of a joke about video game Easter eggs, but also I think a joke about like they probably disable it. <laughs> like they probably don't let you accidentally skip half the game by finding <laughs> um, the music box. Yeah, and yeah, on yeah, it. yeah. So it's probably a joke about how, like you're literally not allowed to. Uh... A lot of things got left behind in the whirlwind of that last night. So we will leave it for a future episode to see what happened to Walter and for that matter the rest of the Finch clan. Um, but um, thank you for joining me for another episode. Um, I, you know, just like uh, Barbara, who was only known to her fans as this one commoditized product of like the cute girl with the iconic scream, uh, you know, you. Uh, you, this is this is just one aspect of me. I'm also like big into EA. I'm big into you know I'm, I, I've got a life right. out here yeah, in Colorado. Yeah. Like I like to go biking, like all that kind of stuff. But I'm extremely grateful that I have been able to uh, over these videos communicate at such a high fidelity 
um, about these ideas that I that I care so much about, um, and I hope that you've enjoyed um, accompanying me through uh, Edith Finch and perhaps Braid and the Witness and who knows what else. Um, so thank you so much for uh, allowing me the chance to uh, uh, share this experience with you, um, and thanks for getting to know Edith Finch. <laughs>